So I'll talk about what observability is, why we need observability, the observability versus monitoring, because it's a common uh, question, right? Is observability the same as monitoring? Or like, what are the differences, right? The pillars of observability, observability with Kubernetes built-in tools, and also kubectl, extending a Kubernetes cluster to use external observability tools, some best practices for observability in Kubernetes, and uh, share some links and some insight on like how teams, cloud native teams, observe their clusters. So, what is the observability? So, the English word, right, observe, observability, is basically to know what's going on, right, on something. So, observability is the process of gaining insight on your application, the behavior, its performance, right, in order to like identify issues, right, that may resolve, or basically to know what's happening, let's say bird's eye view, right, in order to make the system more efficient on also when you have issues to diagnose and to resolve them. And in order to, for Kubernetes to ensure the stability of workloads, reduce downtime and Kubernetes is a lot, right? The cluster uh, system with uh, pods, nodes, there are several moving parts. So that's the essence of observability. Uh, why do we need observability? So uh, for years, software have uh, changed, right? The way we build software, from monoliths to service-oriented to now microservices are like some other stuff. Uh, so monoliths, everything in one place, deployed on one server. Service-oriented, maybe you can have your, uh, the web application, the database, so all separated into maybe three layers or four layers. Then microservices, uh, companies and tools, uh, services we use like Netflix, Uber, there are hundreds of microservices deployed across several uh, clusters in different cloud environments, some on-prem. So uh, if you can look at it in, like, in the real world, right? So I have currently a PC. It's easier to look at a PC, right? Then if I have three PCs, you can look at the three PCs. But it's a lot harder to look at three PCs at the same, at three laptops at the same time than, the first, than when you have one. Then when you have hundreds of services, right, you can't really like look at every service at the same time, check each log at the same time, manually per se. And that is the essence of observability, right? Bringing uh, tools, services, techniques in order to get uh, insight on hundreds of services at the same time, setting up alerts and notifications, dashboards and all, to make sure your system performing uh, as it should be. Um, without observability, you can't understand what's happening in your systems and you can't fix problem. I didn't really see, no, well, I wasn't able to get who exactly said this, so I hinted someone. So whoever said this, you are listening to this talk, yeah, thank you, this is good. Um, observability versus monitoring. So I don't know if you read the introduction or description rather of my talk, right? I talked about like some confusions and struggles I had while understanding uh, observability in Kubernetes. So, and this is a popular one, right? And if you check a lot of articles that have been written on observability, you see that uh, they are differentiating between observability and monitoring. So, in short, right, monitoring is collecting data from a cluster, its component, nodes, pods, containers, to ensure they are all performing as, ex and as expected. Observability, on the other hand, is a broader concept, right? So you can say uh, monitoring is under observability. The goal of observability, like I mentioned earlier, is to understand your system, to know what state is in, what's currently happening in your system, uh, in order to, let's say, do things better, right? So when your, uh, when your system is, is using more CPU resources, right, or memory resources, so, okay, the system is working, the users are using it. But then again, you think about peak periods, right? Let's say during, uh, for, let's say, an e-commerce application, during, um, Black Friday. So what can you do to make your system better in order to save costs at around that time and also to give your users better performance? So yeah, so everything that like comes that comes together, both debugging, right, maintenance, and everything can that comes together making your system better can be put under observability. So both use the same type of telemetry data. Telemetry basically is taking data automatically, right? So these data are known as the pillars of um, observability.
So next, pillars of observability. So I kind of like didn't put in my description, I say I mentioned four pillars, right? But I kind of didn't put it in my slides here yeah, because uh, initially most people say three pillars, right? But there's a new addition profiling. And also, uh, if you look at it, some teams right now may be using more than just these four, right? Like per se in their uh, development team, how they practice observability because they are teams, they are observability teams out there. So hence, I just made it like uh, an a blank, an open page, right? In the sense of whatever you want to add to it, whatever you want to call it for your organization, for your team and yeah. So looking at the current four with the new addition of profiling, logging metrics, tracing, profiling. So metrics in Kubernetes, right, is a type of telemetry data to know what's happening inside your pods and your nodes, in your cluster as a whole, in your namespace, depends on how like the particular aspect of your Kubernetes component you want to look into. So Kubernetes components emit metrics in Prometheus format, right? So Prometheus format is text-based, is machine, uh, is text-based, it's easy to read. I, I have an, a screenshot of an, a, an example. It's easy to read and easy for both humans and machines to understand. So uh, let's say if for you to uh, create dashboards, right, and set up alerts. So there are some issues that like, your system, let's say you're using Grafana, right, with Prometheus. So there's are some issues that you, your system may not catch or the setup you use may not catch that you'll be able to read, right, while debugging or at certain uh, use cases, right. So in most Kubernetes components, metrics are available with the metrics endpoints of the HTTP server. So this is an example of uh, Prometheus metrics. Uh, like I said, it's text-based and it's easy to read and for one to understand. Then logging in Kubernetes, logging, collecting and storing data about events to diagnose issues and when stuff occur. An example is like, uh, there's an error in our application. The first step is to look at the logs, right? So, uh, and also if you look at it, uh, depending on industries, like in the fintech industries, in the, in the fintech industry, or financial industry, you have to like kind of like for compliance purposes, you have to keep logs for like a few years, right? In order to know what happens. And if you have some large scale issues, you need to resolve, you need to be able to submit these logs for compliance purposes. Um, example of logs. So this is an example of how a log might look like. So breakdown, timestamp, log level, um, name of the component. So is it on our app or a database? an all unique identifier, then message, right? In Kubernetes, you see uh, starting up, uh, container failing, there are different like kind of logs that you might encounter. So tracing in Kubernetes, tracing uh, basically is to know like what's, what happened, right? So when a user makes, tries to log in, where, where each request is sent, uh, where did it, is it this server, that the user tried to, that the request was sent. Was it this, uh, my replication in, let's say the initial application was de uh, deployed uh, in the EU year, right? And someone is trying to access it from uh, where I'm from, Nigeria, right? So where did the uh, request, the, uh, um, let's say the content or the feedback, right, was given to the user? Was it from the servers they have in uh, the local zone in Lagos or the ones in uh, South Africa, let's say if you're using AWS. So to know where the origin and the entire flow of requests, right, in order to know when you have issues and also to see bottlenecks in your application, do I need to use a better CDN, right, to know how to deliver uh, this content or this particular uh, service to my user. So there are tracing system, tracing tools like Yega or Jega, however one may call it, Zipkin, um, to enable distributed tracing in Kubernetes. So the, yeah, this is an example of, of what I just like explained, right? The user makes a request, front end deliver, shows the user. So like if, if there's an error or something occurs, right, as this is happening, you'll be able to know like what happened, where it happened, and know how to make it better. Um, then the next uh, pillar of observability, which we'll say is the latest addition, is profiling. Profiling to analyze, to know what the particular, uh, let's say, resources, right, 
each section of code, each section, each pod, or each uh, deployment use, right? In order to make it better. So there's kubeflame, right, by Yahoo. It's a kubectl plugin for you to know. So it's just with a little, a few commands. There's little to know overhead. You don't have to build uh, uh, any infrastructure from ground up to know exactly what's happening and profile your system. So uh, generating flame graphs. So flame graphs, so this is an example, right? Uh, my uh, MySQL database, CPU flame graph. So when each uh, SQL query was run, what happens? Like, is it is the performance, does it, does it use more CPU, right? How can I optimize that SQL query? Should I use like a dependency? So this helps you make your system better. This helps you prevent issues in the long run. So um, then observing, observability with kubectl, with kubes, Kubernetes built-in tools and kubectl. So implementing probes, health checks, using uh, kubectl tools to monitor uh, Kubernetes application. So probes, right? So the English word probe, so basically means to investigate, to ask questions, to know what's happening. So in Kubernetes, there are three types of probes. They have liveness, readiness, startup probes. So readiness probe to determine whether a particular container is ready to serve traffic. So you know, when you deploy an application on Kubernetes, uh, starts from container creating, then uh, there's an entire container life cycle, right? So until it gets to the running stage, right? So, um, okay, the, for a pod, right, until it gets to the running stage, it's possible for your pod to be running, but a container in your pod is not running and is not ready to, is, let's say it's an internal fail state, right? So that's possible. And you won't see that by just running kubectl get pod, right? So how will you make sure that like, there is no an issue that, oh, your application shows uh, running one-on-one -on -one con uh, container running, right? How will you make sure that it's ready to serve traffic, it's ready to, be, uh, it's ready to go live per se, right? So using a readiness probe, startup probe to determine where uh, container started successfully and also liveness probe. So, okay, this is just, um, so I'm not going in depth, right? This is open source uh, on ramp. I'm not going in depth to explain each particular uh, tool, each particular feature because of the the goal of this particular section of uh, this summit. So this is just to give an, a, give an understanding, right? So an introductory level into observability in Kubernetes. So this is uh, a manifest file for, let's say, demo uh, deployment with the readiness probe. So if you look at the readiness probe, you can see uh, it runs the command core uh, localhost 3000, which is the port of the container, right? So it pings it if this return and exit zero means the container is not ready to serve traffic, right? So it has an initial delay of five seconds, period seconds of 10. So it, after 10 seconds, it tries again. So when that request is successful, right, then the, you can see that the container is ready to take uh, traffic. So now implementing this in as like the first step, right, to deploy your application, or well, you're sure that if this pod is running, it means that every container in that pod is running. So uh, I kind of like prepared a demo. So let's observe a cluster with kubectl together. So I don't know if you can scan this uh, for to go to a Kida Coda playground, and also uh, scan for the GitHub repository with some commands. So I'll just give you a moment to scan while I. Uh, okay, so. I have the kubectl playground here. Okay, let me start a new session. So this is free. I think you just have to log in. So killer code or killer shell. So K get pods. So K is is set a alias for kubectl or kubectl, however you may call it. So um, this GitHub repo have set out some commands. So in order to know, or you can use this, let me start from the scratch. So know, uh, see all the namespaces in this particular cluster. Then um, you to know what's happening in each of these pods, you can use the describe command, or to see the logs, you can use uh, 
the um, you can use the logs command right then uh, the goal of this right is to want to see the resource utilization of pods and nodes in the killer coda kubernetes playground so uh, to see the monitor node and pod utilization, we use the top command, right? Um, so let me go. So C says this command allows you to see the resource consumption of nodes and pods. It requires the metrics server. So you know, like I mentioned earlier, Kubernetes emits metrics like via the metrics endpoints. So, and it says this command requires a metric server. So if I try to see the um, kubectl um, top node, if I try to see, oh, I will get uh, metrics API not uh, available. So this process, right, this entire process is kind of like debugging, right? I want to see the, uh, the resource utilization of the nodes in my cluster, but I can't see that. So it's giving me an error metric API not available. So I added some commands also, I, well, some commands. So we can install, we need to first install, deploy the uh, metric server. So copy that, then um, deploy the metric server. So it deploys the metric server, it's uh, RBAC, uh, role-based authentication, service account, and everything it needs to run for you to access the metric of nodes and ports. So if I run this command again, I would still get the same error. And that's because, okay, this is a playground cluster. It's not really like a reward cluster, right? It's not uh, meant for you to deploy applications. So uh, the metric server is uh, designed on the Kubernetes repository. It is designed to uh, need secure access, right? You know, the uh, role-based authentication that was added. So what next I need to do is to uh, take away that, for this demo, I need to take away that, um, I need to make it possible for me to access data, from, for me to call the metric server uh, insecurely or unsecurely rather. So this is, this is just for demo purposes. So I need to uh, edit the deployment and, okay. And, then head over to the container and add this argument. So if you know um, with uh, Kubernetes, with YAML configuration, right? This is a top level, or how do you call it? So the fact that I don't put this dash, right, before the command means that the following uh, flags I will add would be under the initial argument. So let me add this. So if I save it, so now it's edited. So if I try to call, to run the command again, okay, so now I see it's not, the metrics API is not available. So let me check why. I use uh, k get ports dash n namespace keep system. So I see, okay, it's terminating the initial deployment of the, the initial port of the uh, metric server and it's deploying the new one. So if I see, so it's still terminating. Okay. So now I have the metric server running. So let me try again. Okay, now I can see this, the control plane node is using 14% uh, of the CPU and I can see the metrics of the uh, nodes in the cluster. So if I go for pods, oh, pods, a cube system. So now I can see for pods too. So moving from just the metric server and implementing Prometheus, right? You can then have a complete uh, monitoring pipeline. And from then you can now build dashboards, right? Uh, let me go back to the slides and yeah. Then extending the next part of this talk, extending uh, a cluster to use observability to for metrics, right? 
There's Prometheus, Victoria metrics, Influx, DV, Grafana. Grafana is not really just for metrics, but it's mostly used for uh, creating dashboards, alerts. Grafana basically for logs. You can also make dashboards for logs by implementing Grafana. Also, uh, Pyroscope for profiling is built by Grafana. Um, or you can use an all-in-one or basically a non-open source uh, observability tool like Diana Trees, and there are several out there. Uh, for logs, Fluent D, Logstash, Quartracing, like I mentioned, Jaeger for profiling, Cube, uh, CTL frame, Flame, Pyroscope. So for metrics, right, like I mentioned earlier, if you had a metrics airpoint, every component in most components in Kubernetes emits a metrics, fairly metrics endpoint. Then Prometheus, right, in, prom, in deploying Prometheus, it extracts, fetches those metrics. Then connecting Grafana, you can be able to create dashboards and display those metrics, right? Um, for next, you have extending uh, a cluster, external login, right? So this, I wrote an article on Sidecar Container, it's on the Spacelift blog. I don't know if you know the company Spacelift for IEC deployment, but that's, no, I'm talking about today. So basically, multi a port can have multi con multiple containers, right? So the sidecar container is for the logs, st streams the logs to uh, FluentD. So we, the essence of FluentD, ideally you can use like writing uh, a shell script to stream logs, but the essence of FluentD is like is a unified logging layer. You can perform more complex actions, right, on your logs and more performance, then you can store the logs in an, a, an external log back end, maybe uh, Amazon S3, or maybe you deploy mini O uh, on your own on-prem or your personal server. So for tracing, so you know, we talked about Jaeger. So this is implementing tracing with Jaeger and open telemetry. Open telemetry is like a standard for, standard, an open standard, open source for how telemetry data is being uh, taken and transferred. So the uh, open telemetry collector takes the data from uh, the application, then Jaeger collects uh, the, tr the traces, stores in an in-memory database, and you can then know what happens with each request or that happens in your system. Then profiling, right? Like you saw for Cube uh, City of Flame, in order to claim frame graphs, so you can inf install a Grafana agent or a Pyroscope SDK in order to profile and know what section of code or what deployment is taking more CPU and enable to determine performance or to resolve issues. Um, then best practices for observability. A lot of best practices out there. Um, but this, I would say, is the, like the most basic and the things to keep in mind. Consider your specific telemetry needs, right? So when you first deploy your application, what telemetry data do you need to look at first? So if you look at it, right, like I mentioned earlier, profiling was, is, ba is basically was done now. It hasn't been this kind of new addition to the pillar. So do you need, really need uh, to profiling, right? You know Kubernetes, it's complex on its own. So adding more tooling increases complexity to your system. So you look at what you need now. The basics like we did was metrics, right? So you need to know what's using what. So that's the basic. Keep things simple, right? Depending on your on the team that and the application being deployed. So keep things simple. From there you can scale as your application scales and your team scales. And yeah, an important note is and like uh, Abubakar talked about in the earlier talk here, security rights, permissions, user access, access control. So you shouldn't be using a tool that uh, grants everyone access, right? So the metric, metric server, you know, the demo will be looked at. I couldn't, um, it, it didn't deploy, the, it failed it because of the, the cluster, the playground cluster I deployed it on, doesn't have security set up. It doesn't have uh, uh, user access and roles set up. So I couldn't really, so I had to make it insecure in order to access. So that's not what you should do in a production grid environment. So it's important, so whatever tool you're using, make sure like, can you, can you give least privileges, right, to each user, to from the engineering manager to the administrator to the Kubernetes developer? Everyone should have like precise access and 
just have access of what they need to do at that particular time, right? And yeah, how do cloud native teams observe their clusters? There is a pretty, like, is an entire blog highlighting several user stories. I highlighted it here. I've also added my presentation to the schedule. So uh, there are several use cases one can basically look through, read, and learn in order to implement in your application or your platform. But one, one thing you want to keep in mind is like no application is the same, right? So no application receives the same amount of users from same same uh, country. So an application deployed in Nigeria shouldn't uh, use, try to replicate the observability of an application that was deployed in Spain or in the EU here, yeah, right? So you need to know your uh, uh, platform, know your application in order to deploy, observ uh, deploy your observability tools and techniques. So this user story just serves as a guide, right? Uh, serves as a way for you to learn and know what you should try and implement on sandbox environments, right, before going into production. So Meltwater, you adopted Cilium. I don't know if you know Cilium. So Cilium is um, basically a container uh, networking interface. But Cilium does basically everything on the networking aspect from observability to security, to I think Slim has he has, a, he has a feature for tracing uh, packets B, uh, I think BPF trace. Can we really recall uh, exactly? I worked on Cilium uh, last year during uh, the Google uh, season of docs. So Razorpay, Razorpay is an Indian company, right? So someone trying to deploy an application is in India should okay. Maybe you're more interested in checking out what Razorpay did, right? Are you doing something fintech related? Razorpay will be your, your best bet. Then Hulu, a streaming interface, and all. So these are several examples one can read and understand like how do these teams in, uh, observe your cluster. Some of them use the tools I mentioned. Some of them build their own tools from scratch. Like Netflix, I think Netflix builds its own from scratch. So it's just for you to learn, mix, match, test at sandbox environment, and be sure what works for your application. Then conclusion, uh, like I mentioned earlier, observability is broad. There are um, a lot of things to consider. So in, for met in metrics, in profiling, in logs, there are a lot of things to consider, but starting small, keeping things simple, and scaling and learning, right? I wouldn't say myself I'm an expert in observability, right? But it's those learning that I'm able to understand like, oh, this you use for this. I would rather use this for my application or use this. So you just for want to keep learning and trying and implementing within your, uh, uh, um, your organizational environment. And like I said, more importantly, in sandbox environment before moving into production. So if things break or if things, if for instance, you're, you're deploying your observability stack but it's in turn having effect on your application. That doesn't make sense. So you know that in sandbox environment before going to production. So like I mentioned, Kubernetes is complex. Nodes, networking, uh, the, uh, Kubernetes has a flat networking, uh, I think the topology does the word. So there are a lot of moving parts, a lot of things that are happening. Uh, so in a, in a team, uh, maybe only two people might know some stuff about a particular Kubernetes cluster that have been deployed. So more tools you add, the increase in complexity. So start small, keep going, but uh, tracing the point of starting small and keeping things simple in order to scale. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening to me. And yeah, I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, my GitHub. I try to write as much open source code as possible. And yeah, I hope this was interesting and insightful. And if you have any question, you can ask, and I'll try my best to answer to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, thank you. Is there any question? Okay. Uh, I think he's coming with the mic. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much for the presentation. I was curious about why you think that there is a new, I would call it a new fourth pillar in observability in profiles. And maybe are we ready to obliterate the pillars and just call them something new? They're all one thing at some point. Like what's the difference between a log and a trace? 
so, and a profile. Is it just an event at, at this point? Okay, so I, I would say like um, it's been new. It doesn't mean that it wasn't companies and organizations weren't doing it before, right? When I say new, is like, okay, if you're talking about observability, it's been like categorized, right? That's what I would say when I say new, is like being categorized. So hence the, why I didn't give it like, oh, just three pillars or four pillars, because uh, someone, another organization can call it a different thing, right? So I don't know if this answers your question. Well, I think I, I want to keep pushing and say, okay, yep. if the categorization is the only thing that's happening, let's stop categorizing it and just say observability is built on events. Oh, yeah, that makes sense too. So that makes sense too. So like I said earlier, right, depends on like what you need right now. Observability, like I mentioned, observe. So what happens in a cluster, right? So you can decide to categorize it. You can decide to not categorize it. Hence the confusion, right? Hence the confusion for me, like I mentioned in my description, trying to understand, is monitoring different from observability? Is it, it, but it's actually the same thing. Or you can say observability is a broader term for anything you just need to know, like you mentioned, events that happens in your cluster. And having an idea, in case of issues, know how to resolve issues or to make your application better. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah, thank you very much for that. Absolutely. Yeah.